Um, can you guys unmute? Hey, Mike and Rachel, we can't hear you. Sorry, I haven't done this. And that weeks. concludes the <laughs> meeting. Thank you all online. <laughs> but no, what we were saying is when team meetings go back to Tuesday, they're going to be at 927, not 930. So we'll start the hype song around 920. Um, I had a little Jack and Diane going today. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jack. Jack Daniels. I was like, oh, oh okay. I'm going to hear that this morning. Yeah, yeah too. Yeah. So, first thing we always do is you need to meet somebody you don't know. So, look around in the room. If you're online, look around, find somebody, and direct message them. You have one minute. Go. Hi to them and have them stand and tell us who they are. I'm John. I'm with uh, Legal Land Title right behind the building here. So, Hi John. You guys Wait, this is your first meeting with us? This is my first meeting okay. with you guys. I'm actually uh, kind of new to the company. Uh, so, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, you know where to find us. We're easy to find. Just swing by and and uh, even if it's not our file, we'll try to help you anywhere we can. Awesome. Great to meet you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Going through Thank the back and around. I see, I see Jess. Yep, Jess. Hi guys, I'm Jess Bowman, Bowman Insurance Group. Um, we are here to help you guys with any and all insurance needs, and we appreciate um, all of you guys. Cool. Yeah, anybody online? I don't think I so. See anybody? Also, since we're in bold, we want to thank our bold sponsors. Yep. And um, we weren't here last week, so this mm -hmm. is a double. So um, you can see the different companies that were there sponsoring at Bold. They talked with you some at those at the events. Yep. But uh, we're think we can't do all the trainings we do without help from our sponsors and our, our yeah. vendors and our affiliates. Yeah, and it's been an amazing Bold. And we again, we couldn't have done it without our partnerships with our vendors because they help provide to pay for the venue, for our snacks, for our drinks, mm -hmm. for our coffee because we all need coffee, and for our lunch. So um, we got Jack Daniels. So. Seriously, and everything that we do, it's because of our vendor partners. So thank you all again for everything you've done. Awesome. Okay. Also, I found on the red store some bold t-shirts. Now, some of you are making your own. I still want one of those. Huh. But, uh, <laughs> and I told Jen Davis, I said, this is a big market. You should have all kinds of purple shirts, all kinds of other stuff, so there might be more coming, but you can get these right now also with the bold stuff on there. They should call me. I'll hook them up. That's yeah, right. yeah, there we go. So every week we talk about our mission, vision, values, belief, or perspective. This week it's our mission, which is? Build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, Experiences worth giving and legacies worth leaving. And all that is wrapped into what we've been learning in bold for the last oh, six for weeks. For sure, for sure. So it's, it's not about just selling houses, it's about living a bigger life. And that's why we have a culture winner each week, don't we? Yeah, and I think the big thing with that is you get into your real estate license and you think, okay, I'm a real estate agent. But congratulations, you are now a business owner. And so how do you need to show up? What does your PL look like? So if y'all don't have a PL, come to Business Planning Clinic, which we'll talk about I'm here in a little bit. A slide on there. But it's not just being a real estate agent. You have your business and you are empowered <laughs> to build this business, whatever it looks like. And mm -hmm. so I love this statement because it, it dives deeper into just having a job. It's not about listing, buying, listing, buying till the day you die. There's more to yeah. it. So no one wants to do that. Yep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Last week's or actually two weeks ago, winner was Nicole Rice. Oh yeah, Nicole's up there. Do you want to say what you like? No, okay. No, oh, okay. okay. So this week's winner is 
Jennifer Wolf. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. Go for it. Okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to the admins, the unsung heroes of the real estate world who do an incredible amount of work behind the scenes to make our sales a success. I nominate Jim Wolf for the Stephas Award because she does so much for me and the rest of the EA group without complaint and a smile on her face. Thank you for being amazing and helping her focus on our top 20%. We love you, Jen. That's awesome. Jen, are you listening right now? I don't think so. I didn't see her on. Okay, grab your phones. Oh, you. She's going to love this. And it's being recorded back there, too, I see. Yep. Okay, text her saying, congratulations, you're the culture winner. Her number is 303-818-0980. One more time. 303-818-0980. And I completely agree with what Nicole has said. Uh, the admins in our world are truly the backbone of our organization, and we couldn't be able to do the things we have done and we'll continue to do without them. Uh, if you don't know, we do have an admin mastermind every month. Uh, and so at the end of October, Jen will actually be coming and talking about um, what she learned at the operations boot camp in Austin the week before. So strongly encourage if you have an admin or if you as a rainmaker want to come and just learn more about it, we'd love to invite you to our admin mastermind. Cool. Okay. Broker moment. Jim, what do we have? I'll be quick. <laughs> Wish we had a bigger crowd. <laughs> well, we could have a whole 15. Don't worry, right. it's recorded. So the board does have a YPN oh, event no. that Blake and Pauline are hosting too. So that could be a shorter. <laughs> 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 wow, you might have to move the Y, right? Yeah. Um, we received an email last week from the board, from the MLS, when the MLS, you uh, the committee called. Your committee? Uh, your bad committee. Again, about solicitations. You know, uh, people were doing and what it basically was, they were circle prospecting by phone, making phone calls saying, hey, do you know anybody wants to sell your house or do you want to sell your house or anything like that? I, I mean, you can do that, certainly. You can circle prospect by mail and send out a postcard, couldn't you? You know, say at the bottom, if you're working with an agent, you know, disregard this, this is not a solicitation. You can't do that by phone very well, can you? So first step, you look at the address, Next step, you look at the MLS. MLS, and then you avoid that altogether. It's difficult if you're using an auto dial. Anybody using that? Mm -hmm. Auto dials, they don't do that. They don't allow you to do it. They just dial the next number and you go on. It's more of a problem with the teams than it is with anybody else. But the last thing we want to do is be soliciting active listings of some other agent within our company or at another company, because that is a violation and will get you in trouble quickly. And sued. Yes. If they're on the no, do not call list as well. Oh, and sued if they're on the do not call list. So basically that's it. Other than that, you're wonderful. You haven't caused any problem for me. No, um, we talked marketing remarks. The Burbage didn't have an agent that said like, call us today. Yeah, maybe so, where you so we're, you can't, you right. can't, anything going in public that makes anybody that might have an agency with somebody else, Call you. So somebody has something saying, call us today for a showing, change it to just call today for a showing or something. But if somebody is technically under employment with somebody else, that could be implied that you're trying to take the person. So How dumb is that? That's, that's so dumb. dumb. Yeah. But all it takes is one person who thinks it that way. And that's also true. Sorry, from the sky. That's also true in your MLS. That's where majority of those fines were coming through was they had that actually in the marketing remarks on MLS that you know, call us for your, your private showing today. You can't direct it to yourself. So if in doubt, ask questions on that. Yeah. Thank you, Don. Okay, stats info. There's one number that stood out to me. And it's, not, it's not one you see every week. This is how I do the stats each week. It is a handwritten thing where I hop on at 7 a.m. every Monday morning, and I pull the current active listings, current pending and different things. But what's interesting, we had SOMO had 349 total new listings this last month. 62 new listings went under contract in that week. That's all. It was to where it was like 349 and 320. Okay. GSBOR had 224 listings go active last week. They had 55 go under contract. Here's where it really showed up in Douglas House, Shannon, Texas, Webster, Wright County. So those one, two, three, four, five, six counties. 41 new listings, three of them went under contract. Yikes. And then in our north counties, Cedar, Day, Dallas, Hickory, McLean, Polk, St. Clair, 26 listings went live. Six of those went under contract. 
So if you're telling your sellers, I'm going to sell it in a week, you better be sure because that's not the market we're seeing now. But the one that really hit me was when out of 41 went live, three of them are what sold. Now that more sales happen, but three of those brand new ones are all that went under contract. So that was a big, interesting number. And again, compared to last week, numbers are about the same. Compared to last year, Soma had 349 listings this week, 433 last year. GSBR, 224, 265. So it's down, it's kind of the new normal, but what's interesting now is how few of them are selling in that first week. Mm -hmm. So just have those conversations with your people. And like we put on the Facebook post last week, there are systems in Flex and List Hub where it makes you stay in touch with your people, let them know what's going on in the market. Yeah, if you missed that post from my class week, go back to the integral page. That was fabulous. It was brilliant. Cool. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, it really was a great conversation that Mike had started. So, and the other thing that we've noticed from our broker metrics is in terms of units sold, we are number one in terms of units sold for the counties that we look at. And our days on market are significantly less than the competitors. So you may not be able to say I can sell it in a week, but you could say based on this data that we have, we do sell it faster than any other company. So it's about the language that you use and the data that you have to support that. Can you can you guys share that, what the average days on market was for us versus? Yeah, so all? we have that in the report. If you do not receive broker metrics that get sent out every month that shows that, Email Landon, KLRW369 at kw.com. They'll send all of that to you, and it's a graph. Now, we will say if you push like it out publicly, please remove the competitor's names. We don't want to do any of that. Yeah. So. We'll brag on us not saying anything about other people. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the thing that I sent out last week was from the way we used to do it, like pre-2018. You would take a listing, and your first 30 days was marketing it. And so you knew you were going to have that listing 90 to 120 days, or as Jim said, sometimes you had an anniversary with that listing. <laughs> But you had to be able to stay in contact with your people to let them know you were doing something that you just hadn't stuck it in the internet and you're waiting. And this could change your agency agreements for how long you're putting the date of how long this agency agreement. So make sure you're you're looking at those numbers and you're not just going back on autopilot of what you used to put in that because your agency agreement may need to extend longer than what you used to have. Exactly. Okay, uh, active listings. It gradually went up again, 1418. The biggest of all last year was 1401 and 1400 in late October. So we'll just have to watch the trend, see if it keeps going up. Again, if you look in past, past history, we should be over 2000, somewhere in the 2000 range. So we're still quite a bit short. So if you're talking with sellers, say, hey, there, are still a, a, there is still a housing shortage. This is a good time to do it. And if interest rates change, Think how many buyers that's going to open back up into mm -hmm. the market too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for your buyers as well, if they're thinking about buying, let's talk about if interest rates drop and how much more competitive that's going to get and what that's going to do to the pricing factor of that as well. So it's both sides of it. We still have a lack of inventory, still a good time to sell. It just may not sell as quickly. And so resetting those expectations of what that would look like. Yep. Okay. Uh, GSBR slides. Uh, the annual meeting and cornhole tournament is Thursday night. That's at Farmers Park, starts at five. It's a lot of fun. If there's a silent auction, there's several Chiefs memorabilia things for, uh, for auction. It's a good time. So just plan on going to that. Um, oh, let's see if this will play. Are we going to skip that because it's in the weekly? Oh, they get that, don't they? Yep. And he's quiet anyway. Okay, branding violations. This is some of what we were talking about before. This went to you on the Sunday slides also, um, or the Sunday email you get. Yep. Just make sure if it's public facing, it's got to be as if it could go to somebody else's website. So just double check that. And calendar. So you'll see on here that uh, Nicole's class for Thursday is postponed. We had to push it back to October. Um, so we're ending up the end of the month here. We have seller's contracts with Don on Thursday. Thursday. I'm pointing the wrong day on this. That should be over. <laughs> it's been one of those weeks. And then a commercial mastermind at noon here. I do not know the answer. Okay. To I think it is, but we'll double check on that. And October's coming. Mm -hmm. It's there's, here. There's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. It's the fourth quarter. In fact, that's um, next week's team meeting is Carrie and Adam talking about it's fourth quarter, how to ramp up to end the season, to end the year strong. A <laughs> mm -hmm. um, couple other things on here. Actually, we'll have slides for them. So we have our whole Fall in Love with Real Estate series going. We've changed the theme for October 17th. It has now revised your new KW agent website. They have redone it. And we're going to have an expert zooming in on us to show you how to update your website. You can now customize almost everything on it. 
You can make an open house landing page. So you can pick, even if it's not your listing, you've got permission from somebody else, but you can put it in there. And when they sign in on your tablet or your computer at the open house, they directly go into your database. So there's all kinds of things. We're going to talk through all those on that 17th. So we go back really quick to yeah. that. Okay, cool. A couple of things. There we go. Um, so star here on the 10th, that is when we change team meetings. So next week is our last Wednesday team meeting. So please make note, the star means that we are back on our <laughs> normal day for that. So I wanted to point that out because I've had a couple of questions. And life will be feeling normal again. Well, no, because we started at 927 now. So it's not as normal. But it's the new normal. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Everything's the new normal. Also on here, you can see our how we have our trunk or treat and our chili cook off on the 26th. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. And a costume contest. It is a costume contest. So yes. bring your A game. Leadership team's coming in hot again. That's right. <laughs> and feel free to bring uh, your kiddos as well. So yep. this one should be a fun event for them to come. Didn't we used to have them trick or treat around in the different offices? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have. Yep. So yep. go. we yep. can do that He's again. Like, I know. Okay. Tell them about the business planning clinic. Yes. So business planning clinic time is here. So as we prepare for October 11th, we actually have Chris Langquist coming in. He is a KWU approved business planning instructor. Um, he is also a MAPS coach and a former team leader. So previously we have had our top agents teach uh, business planning, but we thought we'd switch it up this year. And we would love to have an outside perspective of an agent within the KW ecosystem to bring in fresh new ideas. So one of the benefits about KW is our ecosystem is so large so we can learn from so many others. So he's coming in. Uh, this will be off site. Um, Nicole has all of that information with the QR code and a link in the chat as well. I believe it's at RC Event Center, which is on Battlefield. Correct. Um, so October 11th, we're going to cover the four models out of the MREA. Now, if you have a team and you're going to do your own separate business planning clinic, I still encourage you to come and listen from Chris because what he talks about, you could then take and use in your own business planning clinic within your team. And this is a great conversation <laughs> to what are our goals for next year? So as we lead up to business planning clinic, think about that. What do you want to do? Not only professionally, but personally in your life. Because remember, we only in real estate to help fund our perfect life. So what professional goals or personal goals do you have as well? So we'll cover those four models. Um, and we'll deep dive into that. And then our plan, most likely, and we don't have a date set, is probably the week after doing a mastermind as to, okay, now we said this is our goals. What are we going to actually go and start implementing? How do we break 18th. it down? Okay, yeah. Okay, perfect. 18th. And so we're also going to be using the playbook that was released at Mega Camp with the one pagers, especially in the lead generation models, to so get in pods based on your lead gen models and really mastermind those. Thank you. Yes, so this. And so we're really trying to put... You, it's learning that we're, we're bringing. Yes, Mike is a perfect man of white. Okay, there we go. Wow. Um, it's the all has into action portion of it. And so right now, more than ever in fourth quarter, we need to start getting into action mode. So our leadership team, we're going to be talking about how do we have more action-based events. So now that we're finishing bold, how do we have bold days? So where you can go and it's not just dialing, it's how do you create a bold 100 in your world and having those maybe database days. We're going to start bringing that back because we need to get the traction still going in fourth quarter. Yep. Um, so we've got Chris's whole bio here. Basically, he was someone who says uh, <coughs> college dropout with multiple failed or zombie businesses. Then he read the MREA and became a millionaire. And so everything we teach, and if you've never had a business plan before, this is baby steps on how to set it up and not just do real estate as a hobby, yes. but actually strategize and make it work for you. And <laughs> you're not going to get it all figured out in this business planning clinic day. Like that's a lot to uncover and deep yep. dive in one day, but it's the starting point to learn what kind of questions you need to ask. And if you need to schedule a time with Mike and I to start deep diving into that more and more, happy to do that. Um, but just come and just be a sponge. This is your first time, you're gonna learn it. Um, and for those of you that have never been a part of it, this is a very core class that KW teaches. Yep. Okay, how many of you have been to Mega Camp? Let's see hands. What if Mega Camp was an hour away? Ooh. Wouldn't that be better? It is, sort of. There's a new thing called the Greater Heartland Summit. It is a mini Mega Camp in Branson at the Hilton Convention Center right on the landing. It's October 29th. That evening's the welcome party. This, actually, let's look at this. How do each of us respond when we feel trapped in our personal or professional lives? What tools do we have in our toolbox that we can pull out when we're feeling abandoned or facing overwhelming uncertainty? I'm Sam Goodwin. I'm the keynote speaker at this year's regional summit in Branson, and I look forward to sharing with all of you my story and message that uncertain times are exactly what we need in order to grow. 
I hope you'll join us in October for discussions around building wealth, thriving in a shifting market, effectively using social media, and much more. I look forward to being there and seeing all of you soon. Cool. And here's the tentative schedule. In other words, this could change, but they're going to have Julia Lachey Israel there, who's one of my favorite speakers on DEI things. Um, my favorite one, mompreneurs, mom entrepreneurs, moms that are running a great real estate business. I don't know if it's a panel or a clinic or what it is, but that really caught my attention because being a mom is the hardest job on earth. And some of you know how hard it is to do that and run real estate. So that's going to be a great one on that. Um, you can see some of the other things, commanding market share, market update for our region, not just nationwide stats, but what's going on in our region, which is a five state area. Um, and it's just going to be fantastic. So it's, it's in Branson. We have a few scholarships for non-KW people. If they're interested in sort of learning about us, um, let us know. We'd love to take some people to it. I think it was 250. Um, I believe so. Uh, Jordan Freed will be there again. So for those of you that attended his My Freed Live, he will be there. Um, if you don't know who Jordan is, this is a great time to know. This is the first time our region's ever done this. And I want to show up big, especially since it's in Branson, so we can bring events like this here locally again. This is a huge leverage piece. And when I say leverage piece, it's, it's a way to network with other agents. So for potential referrals, our region spans five states. We have over 7,000 agents right here in our region. This is going to be a huge event. And you're able to get an experience of why a mega camp and family reunion are so valuable. If you haven't been to one of those, I strongly encourage, but this is a great way to dip your toe into that experience to see what it's like and how you can develop your growth plan even further. So Nicole's got the link online and then there's the QR code too. Mm -hmm. I know it's small, but again, we have flyers all around on this so we can get you to it, but it's gonna be incredible. Um, and Smokey Garrett, he's how many? He has 14 market centers. He's the largest uh, market center ownership in KW. So he's going to bring his perspective on things, too. He's our regional operating partner, too. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Okay. And then, believe it or not, February is going to be here soon enough. Family reunion is in Vegas this year. Mm -hmm. So schedule it now. Um, there's... It's still cheap. Well, <coughs> lower than it will. Yes. Um, the big thing I've heard about Family Reunion this week is that KW is putting <coughs> more money into this event than they ever have in any of the events. They've realized that there has been a time where some other companies or even other agents are putting on bigger and better events, even though I'm kind of surprised because I always think they're bigger and better. Yeah. Um, however, I heard the keynote speaker, and they won't name names, um, they are not putting a dollar amount to it, but it will be one of the best keynote speakers they've had. Um, I heard upwards to $150,000 plus just to bring in this one speaker for this event. So um, bigger and better than ever. So if you can go to Vegas, please do. I believe, I think Southwest Airlines, if you want to like drive to a St. Louis, I think they're having a discount right now for flights oh, really? in Southwest. Okay. And so I think by the end of the week. So if this is something you're interested in and flying Southwest, this could be an opportunity to get a cheaper ticket. So they also, Allegiant flies straight there mm -hmm. and Allegiant flies there from exit A, which is Bentonville. Yeah. So that might be different days for you, but there's a lot of- you know, I think the dates for family, it may make you stay there longer if needed. So I don't know how you feel about staying that long in Vegas, but something to look into. And I believe it's the week after the Super Bowl, which is also yeah. in Vegas this year. Yeah. So, that'd be wild. Yeah. <laughs> so another yeah. show will be going on at the exact same time. Two for one, Drew. It's a double write-off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lots of info, lots of things going on. We want to make sure you're aware of all these things so you get to as many of these as possible. Okay, so this week our main focus is what is the ALC? And the reason we're doing this is there's a thing called the ALC clinic coming up. Let me go back to the calendar. It is on. Do I see it? And it's not. Um, it will be October 12th. October 12th in Kansas City. Yeah. So let's go back. What is the ALC for people that don't know? Yeah. So the ALC is called the Associate Leadership Council. And for those of you that haven't been with KW, how this got started was when Gary first started his own brokerage. Um, he had a group of agents leave him. And they went to another competitor and he sat down with them and said, okay, tell me what would have to change for you to be in business with me. And the first thing they said is we want portions of your profit. So that's where profit share came out of. Then the second thing is they want to have a voice in the company. And so that's where the Associate Leadership Council was formed. So the Associate Leadership Council is a group of our top agents because um, there are certain criteria to get into it that help make 
decisions for our office. So a lot of the things that we roll out here at KW is not just from leadership or top down of saying this is what we're going to do. A lot of the things <coughs> we take to our monthly ALC meetings and we get feedback from all of our members on it and we want their buy-in. Because at the end of the day, if no, if we don't have agreement, then why are we doing the things that we're doing? And also for us on the leadership team, if we didn't have you amazing agents, we wouldn't have a job. Um, so from that, our ALC not only is like policies and procedures, it's high-minded conversations. What's going on in the market? How can we help each other in their business? Uh, and we meet every month to talk about that. And they hear from what's going on in the market center perspective, but also how can we help develop them as leaders? Now, the big thing on that, most brokerages, the owner slash broker make all decisions on it. And here it's agent run. And so it's a whole different format. We have a voice in how things are going. Even if you're not on the ALC, that's why we're bringing this up. Maybe you want to be down the road. So we want to let you know what the process is, why it's there. And you can always come to ALC meetings. We have them. It's on first Thursday, second Thursday of each month. Depending on the calendar. Depending on the calendar. Um, but you're welcome to hear that and hear the discussions that go on in there. Yeah. And we have a couple of ALC people who are going to talk to them about what they've had from, from being out of. Honestly, I would love more people to come and be a part of those conversations. You can't talk if you're not on the ALC, but you can be in the gallery and listen to what is what the conversations are like. And the thing, the aha that I had over the last couple of months is during one of our ALC meetings, do you remember when Dr. Hart came to our team meeting and he spoke? He was Missouri State. He actually sat at the back and listened to our entire ALC meeting. And since then, him and I have had actual conversations, two of them, um, that he was like empowered based on this. He goes, I've never been to another company and heard the conversations that you all are having in this room. And it's like, it's a agent wide decision. And so for somebody outside of the real estate world to have that perspective was really exciting for me because I think in times we look into our box of KW and it's like, this is what, how it's supposed to be. But outside looking in, this is not a normal thing. And so the conversations and we have different committees that you can be involved in. And they're all leaders in our market center that want to help make our market center the best place to be. Red Day would not happen without the ALC. Oh, my goodness. No, not even a fraction. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we have somebody that helps pick the organization and helps spearhead uh -huh. that. One, it's so empowering for them, but then it also brings a different perspective of what um, organizations are important and how we can help them outside of, again, our lens. And the four pillars or the four purposes that they put out for this next year are these listed. Make you rich, which they did not define. Rich can mean whatever you mean it to. It could be financially, it could be spiritually, it could be health, but it is building you to the next level you want to be at. Building your team. If you're looking at growing, it is there as a resource to help with that. Whether that be through GCI or through people. Yeah. What does building your team look like? Yeah. And so these are all different for every person. That's why they left it so generic. Build your wealth. That means different things for every person and develop your leadership skills. That's the best thing because it's going to help you learn how to lead number one yourself. And if you are growing into a different organization or, or a bigger organization of yourself, it gives you the tools there too. Sure. Structure of an ALC. It is run, the actual ALC meetings are on Robert's Rules of Word. I even have a gavel and I smack that thing as hard as I can. We, I we ask people. them every week or month. Please don't hit it that loud. <laughs> 8 a.m. We're not ready for We had a couple people with migraines last time, so we went dink yeah. with it. Yeah. But the structure of it is um, there are different committees. Yeah, so for the ALC, we this year we have nine um, leaders on our ALC, and every one is a leader of a committee. Um, and through that, in the structure, we have... As a market center, we go over our growth numbers, we go over our financial numbers, we review our GPS that we have set out for our market center. Um, and then from there, we get to talk to the agents about where their production's at, where we're seeing it, um, how could they get help? We had one meeting that 45 minutes was talked about leverage. And everybody was chiming in, trying to help each other on how to help in leverage in terms. And that was actually the meeting that Dr. Hart was at. Um, but then we also talk about where the committees and how they're making an impact. So we have committees on tech and agent advocacy and culture and uh, growth and financial and luxury and diversity, equity and inclusion. So that's where the Hispanic heritage came out of that. Yeah. And so each of those committees, they're leaders in our market center that have a passion for that. And how can we gain more agents and help create in this big brokerage, this big world we're creating, still small and the connections are there. So to qualify for it, technically you got to be in the top 20% of the producing agents in the market center to be the committee member but, or a committee lead. But we need committee mm -hmm. members and there is no qualification for that. Mm -hmm. So anybody can be involved in any in that level of it by helping grow the different committee or community committees. Yeah. The reason I'm community was in my head, there are other committees we could have based on like land committee 
or uh, the, the, the different KW communities out there? And it's nice to call it community versus a committee because some of us have been on a committee and it, all you associate is that's a lot of work. We want to develop communities. We develop, want to develop a home where all of our agents feel included, regardless of whatever that is. And we have a lot of alliance groups, so Keller Williams International too. And so how do we, again, make a big brokerage feel small? But one of the first requirements for being on it is you have to go through the ALC clinic, clinic which is this year in Kansas City. October 12th. October 12th. Um, if you can't make that one, though, you can. Is there a way to do we'll one of the other location for you. Find another one. Um, even if you don't qualify yet, I suggest you try and go to that because you can learn just from being there. Um, we've had several people who went a couple years before they wanted to be on ALC just so they could see what the process is and what it's all about. Yeah, and John Clyde, who is our divisional leader, he's over multiple regions, will be the one presenting. So again, an outside perspective, someone else you can learn from in the KW ecosystem. I think we had 18 people join us last year, and there were some people that attended and said, wow, this is amazing. I just don't think I can commit to it this year. Great, let's talk about what would it look like in terms of growth plan for you to be a part of the ALC in the future. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's just one way to learn more about Keller Williams because it's, we are bigger than just Springfield. And one of the really cool things is we're so powerful in Springfield that a lot of people just don't realize until they get out of it, but also the opportunities and the connections you can make. Um, so we have several people in here who are either on the ALC or have been in the past. What can you throw in on this conversation we're having? What, what, was, what did it help you with? What did you like? Don't say what you didn't like. We'll go to this another time. <laughs> Amy. Amy. So I'm, I'm going to stand up. So okay. Please do. And if you want to okay. come up here, you can definitely take front and center. This is fine. So okay. um, I just highly, highly recommend it to anybody that wants to get involved at a higher level, because you are the sum of the five people that you associate with the most. And so even if you feel like I'm not quite there yet, if you can just get in the room and be around, it's amazing to sit at a table with these amazing leaders and learn from them. So you're pouring in your information, but they're pouring back into you as a business leader and it makes you grow and it forces you to think bigger and just the opportunity there uh, to be around like-minded business builders is phenomenal. And oftentimes you're all struggling with the same thing in your business. So like for me, it takes humility to come and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I'm really having an issue with this in my business. But then to hear other people <clears throat> performing at a high level say, I have that same challenge as well. And then we do a mastermind around it to say, how do we get better? And that is something I moved over from a blue company. <laughs> and these levels of conversations were never had there. And I never got to have a conversation with the leadership in that company. I didn't get to know what was going on with the profit. We literally open up our books every, every month, month mm -hmm. and go over, here's how much profit the market center is making. And there's votes that happen about the allocations of the profit. And at the last um, mega camp mm -hmm. that we were at, we got to go to the international a ALC meeting and stand there and be in the room when like massive significant votes that affect Keller Williams International were happening just to get to be a part of the room. Mm -hmm. I need to hear that song from you Hamilton, have, part of the room. We had, like, we room. had a flag like, here. here. I was so, thinking like, Hamilton all <laughs> the entire time as the votes were happening, yeah. but <laughs> it's phenomenal because this is one of the only companies in real estate that you can participate at this massive level and feel like you're part of ownership in the company. And it's, I highly recommend it to anybody that's thinking they want to go that route. And, yeah. and Amy, you've been hard. a phenomenal voice. And when she said that the struggles, it was empowering to hear other people. And she said high performing, but Amy's just as high performing as anybody else on the ALC. It's the lens that we're looking out of, but she brings such a cool perspective because in Amy's perspective, it's the life in real estate, but also outside of real estate that's really important to her. And she doesn't want to have to have this massive team, but she's built this big business in her life. And that's so cool to see. It doesn't have to be a 20 person team and closing 500 units. If that's your path, great. We have a path for you on that. If Amy's perfect path is to build her wealth through real estate investing, great. Let's focus on that too, whatever it may be. So it's so cool to have Amy and her perspective and her care coming every single month for that. Also Red Day, get on the committee for Red Day next year. Because I will say that is, that's the committee that needs the most people. Um, we had a committee of 10 or 12 this mm -hmm. last time and it 
ran so much smoother than ever before because we had so many agents willing to jump in and do stuff. So if you are at this place, you're like, ALC is not for me, get on a committee next year and get on the Red Day Committee <laughs> because whoever does it is going to need your help. <laughs> yeah. True. This is your first year on it, correct? First year on it. And I, I have to say it's, it's overwhelming and awesome to be a part of something like that. Um, much of the conversation where we have just a roundtable discussion about what's going on, what's affecting us, and how what are we going to do, you know, as you know, within our own personal teams, within in our own personal business, how we're going to take care of that. Um, that defines so much of the different masterminds and discussion points, the topics, the the different one-off trainings. You know, you've got folks like Brian Fisher, who's just ridiculous with stuff that he's bringing to the table. Yeah. Um, it, but it's because of conversations that we're having, like, what, what are we seeing? What are we hearing? What's being brought to us? And so I would challenge to say, even if you don't want to be on the ALC, the committees still need a lot of help. You know, uh, it's, it's that conversation of like, well, what is it that's lacking? Where, where are the opportunities for us to expand knowledge and help more people within our market center? Because the ALC is not sitting here looking like, well, how can we get better about being ourselves? It's how can we make KW here in this market center better? How can we help more agents? We want to see more agents succeeding. And that's the coolest part to me is like at, at no point in time, you walk into that whole thing thinking like, well, this is only about how I'm going to make myself better. And I'll just use, it's literally, what can we do? And when you're breaking down the numbers of the entire company, seeing what's happening, seeing how we compare it to the, the current market and what's going on, um, it's, it's eye-opening. And so I want to challenge everybody to show up to a meeting. Um, I promise we're not boring. We try not to be. Um, and two, Definitely just, I mean, get some interest in one, of, one or two of the committees and see if there's any way that you can help or if you've got ideas, throw them out there. I mean, I don't think there's a single person on any committee that would be like, nope, not interested. <laughs> you know? Too full. Can't take yeah, any more. Exactly. Yeah. And Drew's been able to educate us a lot, especially in the new home world. And how important are we, do we have a lack of inventory right now? And he's telling us what they're doing to develop more inventory, how we can better educate our clients in terms of a new build, right? Because it's not going to be perfect. It's still man-made. And that's what he reiterates. And he has options for your clients as well. So it's been And that's what hear. actually made the new build committee that we had on mm -hmm. a yeah. meeting. Yeah, that panel. Yeah. We, we want to grow into yeah. bigger and better things. So it's an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. I'll stand up. It won't matter. Go ahead, stand up. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> so I think one of the coolest things for me on the ALC when I was on it, I'm not, I'm not on it now, but um, was just learning the different numbers, broker metrics, understanding it. You can't help but like suddenly have a better understanding of how the overall market is for where your business is locally. And then you can apply it into your own business every single day. And so when I was off the ALC, I was like, hey, can I still get those emails? Because I still kind of need those emails. So get those reports. I just still kind of need those reports because I, I run a lot of but my like a lot of my conversations and everything that I talk about with clients, friends, and family when they're asking about stuff. It's, I get it directly from broker metrics. Um, also just being in the room really with some of these high-level thinkers has just been phenomenal. So it's awesome. Highly recommend it. Any questions for people that haven't done or, or haven't experienced it? What's, what's kind of the average for that breakdown for in membership? I mean, if you say the top 20%, you've got to be in there. Who would be the bottom on an average? At so, $3 million in production, $4 million in production? Yeah, and last year, we kind of um, condensed it, and we went to top 10 even. Because we've grown so much, our top 20 is like 80 people now. And so sorting through that. So we started with, we opened it up to top 20, and then the people that went, and then we even condensed it to a top 10% as well. Um, and so it's really open to the conversation. And how do we create future leaders? Just like what we talk when we hire for people in our business of building a bench, we are building the bench for our future leaders. So even if it's a, hey, maybe not this year, it's not a no, it's let's see what we can do and how can we help develop your leadership skills and get a broader understanding and then we can step into an ALC. So um, we condensed it last year to top I'm 10. Curious. Yeah. And then the second thing, we've got a brand brand new agent here mm -hmm. who's never been an agent. Right? I'm still in the licensing course. So Welcome. <laughs> but I think yeah. the point is we're sitting here in a meeting where we're talking about it and it's all about how can we help you grow? How can we help you be better? How can we help you reach you know, your dreams, whatever they might be? I think it's really an interesting conversation 
not only comes out of the ALC, it's obvious in our mission statements and things like that, but for somebody who's brand new to the business, you won't ever hear that anywhere else, I'll guarantee it. There's not a <coughs> company standing up there. What most companies do, because I was there, is, you know, here's what we're going to do. You're going to do it our way. This is it. And here it's, how can we help you? How can, how can this staff or this group, and then you'll see on the ALC, if you can attend a meeting, which would be a great idea, is they're trying to figure out how to foster growth within the company too. And get involved. That's the biggest advice I could give. And anytime I meet with somebody that's, Joining KW, whether they're already producing or not, I always say as much as you put into KW, it will give you 10x in return. And so you have to be willing and committed to say, I know this may not be the normal and I don't know the right questions to ask, but that's okay. Meet people, interact, show up to ALC, show up to events, um, come to masterminds or whatever it may be, but just get involved, however that looks like. And I promise you, your life will change because I've talked to so many agents here that have committed and have jumped in and their life has. And it, it's whatever that means for you and what you want it to look like as well. So the reason we brought this up at this team meeting is because the ALC clinic is coming in Kansas City <coughs> to give you a couple of weeks to kind of get scheduled out for that. Mm -hmm. And depending on interest, we may do a van trip up there again. Took a van last year. That's right. So I've had a couple of people say, what if we went the morning before so I didn't have to spend money on a hotel room? So if you're interested, we need to figure out which way works best. If you are thinking you may, might want to take a van ride up there, please email me and let me know if you like the night before idea or the morning of. Um, and it's just it's like we're getting the band together. We're going to hop in the van and go. I so, think it starts at 9 a.m. Does it? Yeah. So, so I think a morning trip will definitely. And is it Overland Park area? Um, Probably. I, I just put Kansas City area because I couldn't remember where the venue was. Yeah. Oh, no, it's up north. It's yeah, at the, uh, the view at Bark. Briarcliff. It's at this place called, what is it again? The View at Briarcliff. So it's a little bit farther north, but it's a really cool place from what I've seen on, on uh, online on it. So online or here, if you're interested in maybe doing a road trip, <coughs> let me know. I promise I'll try and drive my best. Actually, I still have a CDL. Did you all know at one time I was a limo driver? Um, <laughs> one of your mini hubs. Yes. Yeah. One night in town, I picked up Three Dog Night took them to a concert, went back and got the Doobie Brothers, brought them to the same concert. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They have no idea. Mike, I know what you're talking about. I know. Who <laughs> well, you're talking about. Yeah. So, my favorite slide every time I added a phrase to it. What are your action items from what you've learned today? Because knowledge without implementation is just entertainment. So, were we just entertaining for you today? Or are you taking something from this? And something goes quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I need to go to an ALC meeting. Mm, we would love for you to join us. Absolutely. We'll go back to the calendar. Da, 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 Let's find what it is. Next ALC meeting. I'm not going to call somebody who's actively listed. We're not having one in October because the Greater Heartland Summit and the That's right. Clinic. Okay. So we are going to go into yeah. November. Okay, so November. Yeah. November 9th. That's the next ALC meeting, November 9th at 8 a.m. <coughs> Training Center. Yeah. Yep. We had to skip one because of all of our events. Because October's a little busy. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Yeah. Very cool. Sure. All right, next week is our last Wednesday team meeting, and then bold graduation will have been done. So we're back to normal after that. But next week is still Wednesday, and it's the beginning of fourth quarter. So Adam and Carrie are going to talk about fourth quarter. It's go time. The strongest football teams step it up in the fourth quarter. That's what we got to do also. As we go into that next meeting, one of the terms, if you've been at KW, is called a GPS, a goal priority strategies, or a one, three, five. And as we go into fourth quarter, we're going to create a sprint GPS. So if we only have six weeks left, but really all of our contracts need to be written by November 15th because that will close by 2023. So what is your sprint GPS? What are your goals between now and November 15th that you want to accomplish to set yourself up for 2024, what are the activities? And I guarantee probably the number one activity for everybody is just, I need to talk to more people in whatever form that is. Whether, whatever your lead gen lever is, I wanna to talk to more people. So just get out, have those conversations. Um, you never know what will come up.
I want to tell you all what I love about doing the team meetings with Rachel. Oh no. I get these big structure. This yes. <laughs> I get all these wild tangents I go off of, and she always brings it right back to the business and the real estate side. And I love how the balance works there because uh, otherwise we'd be systems and models. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. Uh, we can do this with our vendors and our affiliates that are in here. Thank you. Have an awesome week. Those you online, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.